Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome again. So since Susan's already let you know that it's being recorded, um, and you can turn off your video, I'd like to start with our Sadaka, since this is what we usually do after services. And I uh, wanted to let you know that we have collected so far as of last count, $366 for our Sadaka, which I think is going to be probably an absolute more than we've ever done before. So thank you, all of you who included Sadaka in your um, in your in your registration. Really appreciate that. The past three years have felt like they've flown by. It all started with my installation in Atlanta, then New York City for my training, and now I am virtually in Atlanta again for um, the new installation of the new board. I have had an amazing home hospitality, which is one of the best ways to build relationships. Wherever I've traveled, you've opened your homes and I have met so many phenomenal ladies and your families and your pets. Some of them I wanted to take home. From singing a Dun Alam to a popular secular tune in Alabama to Jewish dancing classes in Tennessee, to snow during a sisterhood Shabbat in Atlanta. My only real regret is that I had to cancel some trips and didn't get to visit every sisterhood and meet so many more of you due to the pandemic. However, I did get to attend some of your virtual programs, which was great. Thank you so much for inviting me. Our sisterhoods have come up with some amazing ideas as we heard earlier today that have kept us going through the pandemic. I'm excited to turn over the reins and all of the boxes of region materials, including the BOA, to Susan at the end of this meeting. Thank you for putting your trust in me these past few years. Shalom. Now I would like to introduce uh, Rabbi Mark Zimmerman, who is going to be giving the Devar Torah. I have to unmute myself. Okay, you all hear me, I hope. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, first of all, it's happy to connect with everyone during these uh, strange times where we've all become uh, IT professionals, it seems. Uh, thankful that we at least have this technology that, you know, allows us to participate together, you know, over great distances. Uh, I was on a program earlier today, you get people from, you know, Israel, England. I mean, it's just uh, incredible. Um, we are in this weird period of the Sfirata Omer, the counting of the Omer. And it dawns on me there are kind of four stages to how it got celebrated. The first stage is really agricultural in the Torah. It was all about waving the grain. You know, the festivals were primarily agricultural festivals. Uh, then Jewish history went into the second stage where there was a shift from the agricultural to the historical. So Passover became not just a uh, agricultural festival, but also the exodus from Egypt. Shavuot went from being agricultural to about giving the Torah at Sinai, receiving it rather. And then we get into a third stage where we end up in the stage of really rebellion and tragedy. Uh, there was great rebellions in the first century of the Common Era, the Bar Kokhba revolt, uh, which ended up morphing into the Hadrianic persecutions, later on the Crusades, and the Omer period became a, a, a real a period of mourning and sadness. And it dawns on me that we're now in a fourth stage. Uh, since 1948, the same Omer period that has Yom HaShoah, of course, Holocaust Remembrance Day, uh, in Israel, the succession goes from Yom HaShoah to Yom HaZikaron, which is Israel's Memorial Day for the fallen soldiers and victims of terror. And then it goes to Yom HaAtzma'ut, which is Israel Independence Day, which was just this past week. And shortly then we have Yom Yerushalayim, which in the aftermath of the Six-Day War celebrated the reunification of Jerusalem. I would tell you Yom Yerushalayim had another incredible significance because it was really after the Six-Day War that Israel got its mojo back and the Jewish people no longer felt vulnerable because those first 20 years of the, uh, of the establishment of the infant state of Israel, 
there was really uh, it was there were some very touch and go moments whether this would actually survive. Uh, after Yom Yerushalayim, it's clear that we're not going anywhere. So uh, one lesson we learned from all this is that the Jewish community and Jewish history does not stand still. And to tie that into Women's League for a moment, uh, our Women's League, our sisterhoods have been a pivotal part of, of Jewish transformation. You know, it activated half of the Jewish population who traditionally had a very minimal role in organized Jewish life. And that really changed a lot with Women's League. Uh, so much of the vitality of our synagogues is linked to Women's League and to uh, sisterhood chapters. And I'm reminded of a statement in the Talmud that says that uh, the mitzvot that we do for one another are ultimately more important than the mitzvot we do for God. You know, the ones we do for God are really between us and God, but the ones that we do for one another impact ourselves, impact God, and impacts our entire community. So uh, sisterhood has just been such an important part of that. Women's League and all of our synagogues is so involved in those kind of, you know, mitzvot that we do for one another. And so I just want to also uh, share a quick kola kavod to Regina Newman. We're very proud of Regina, who is a uh, past president of Congregation Beth Shalom and also had many different leadership roles uh, within Women's League over the years and is, of course, getting the Phyllis Grusin Weinstein Award at this conference as well. So it's that emphasis that Regina always has placed on doing mitzvot for everybody and helping to build community. Uh, that's so much of what Women's League is about. And so I'm just uh, delighted to be with you all and celebrate in that way. Thank you, Rabbi Zimmerman. And I have a few reminders on uh, for Zoom. However, we've taken care of a few of them. Um, I believe everyone's in gallery view. Uh, Renee is uh, taking care of renaming people. We'd like you to have your first and last names and um, you can um, chat to Renee Ravitch and she will help you. Number three that was in our programs, um, G is automatically muting everybody when we uh, are not supposed to be talking. And the one important thing, if you have a chat question, direct it to Cheryl Garfinkel um, by clicking on the chat bubble at the bottom of your screen. And you can type your questions and we will handle them. And I'll turn it back to Jen. Thank you so much, Susan. We really appreciate everything that you have done for this conference. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the awards and recognition of the milestone anniversaries. And we do have a slideshow for you. So this year we're doing our milestone awards since we didn't get to have our wonderful conference that was planned in Knoxville. Thank you, Knoxville, for offering to have that conference last year and all the work that you put into it. But since we didn't get to have that because of the pandemic, we are spotlighting the 2020 milestone award winners, which would have received this last year. And we're also spotlighting the 2021 award winners. Next slide, please. Ways, women of AYS, Augusta, Georgia, celebrating 25 years. B'nai Zion Sisterhood, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 65 years. Beth Israel Sisterhood, Greenville, South Carolina, celebrating 65 years. Beth Shalom Sisterhood in Dunwoody, Georgia, celebrating 35 years. Wody, oh, okay, Beth Shalom Sisterhood in Memphis, Tennessee, celebrating 65 years. Wody, Women of Temple Israel in Charlotte, North Carolina, a whopping 100 years. 
And now I would like to spotlight two more sisterhoods. These are anniversaries that are their personal sisterhood anniversaries, not being affiliated with Women's League for Conservative Judaism. So everything you saw before was Women's League for Conservative Judaism. And this one, Ahabat Achim Sisterhood celebrated their 100 years last year. And finally, Sherith Israel Sisterhood in Atlanta, Georgia has been a sisterhood for 105 years. And of course, Women's League formed and they said earlier that it had been around for 103 years. So we've got some longstanding sisterhoods in here. Thank you very much. Mazel tov to all of you. We appreciate you being a part of Women's League of Conservative Judaism and are so happy to have you as part of Southern Region. Now we're going to turn it over to Helen Crawley so she can present the Torah Fund Awards. Um, You're muted. Am I back now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, did uh, I think I may have not understood something. I, should I be sharing that PowerPoint? Um, I think G's gonna put the PowerPoint okay. up. Thank you. So um, this year, um, we are presenting the 2019-2020 awards for Torah Fund Golds. Um, we did not get to do so last year. And this for this current year, it's too early. So we're not going to present those yet. We'll keep that until next year. But for 2019-2020, we'll get to the next. Thank you. Uh, we have quite a few um, sisterhoods that were able to meet their goals. Ahavath Ahim in Atlanta, Georgia. Congregation Bath Shalom in Atlanta. Congregation B'nai Torah in Atlanta. Synagogue Emmanuel in Charleston. Heska Muna Women's League in Knoxville. The Jewish Congregation of Oak Ridge in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And Ways in Augusta. And I'm so proud of you, all of you. And you did a wonderful job. And when I give my report, I'll give you guys a status update for where we are now. Okay. I am going to um, welcome you all. And at an in-person conference, I would be welcoming everyone and asking ladies to stand as they are mentioned. However, this is not really feasible on Zoom. We could have spotlighted each of you as I mentioned names. However, this would be cumbersome. And I did not want to do a PowerPoint because I really wanted to, to recognize you and read your names. First of all, I want to thank our conference committee for all the time and effort involved in the preparations for this conference. And I want to thank um, G, our tech consultant. Um, her, her real name is Jermaine Wong, but she's better known as G for her assistance, both in pre-conference and today. And we could not have accomplished today without her. A special thanks also goes to um, our WLCJ International Conference Consultant, Renee Ravitch, um, for her questions, suggestions, and Zoom expertise um, throughout our planning, and I will introduce her shortly. I would like to recognize our 10 past region presidents who are here with us today. Gloria Adelson, Paula Copeland, Barbara Ezring, Marsha Fish, Marilyn Lieberman, Marsha Minuskin, Regina Newman, Ellen Vinoker Potash, Jacqueline Stevens, and Barbara Whiston. And now some recognition of our individual sisterhood presidents or leadership teams um, who have joined us from my- Can I sit with you for a minute, Susan? It's June Schwartz. Hi. Hi. June I want to. Schwartz is yes. with us. She is okay. also past president. I want to congratulate you because 25 years ago when I met you, 
at a conference, you were considering joining Women's League, and here you are in a wonderful position. I'm so happy for you and for your sisterhood. So um, you. I, I was president at that time when you joined, so wonderful to remember that. And I remember that well. From um, my own synagogue, Adasha Shuren Synagogue in Augusta, um, Kathy Fishman and yours truly. From a goodeth Israel at Ahayim in Montgomery, Reverend and Irene Kramer. From Ahaviz Achim Congregation in Atlanta, Allison Feldman. From Beth Israel in Greenville, Cheryl Gleich. From Beth Shalom Atlanta, Marsha Fish and Cheryl Garfinkel. And is there somebody else or just the two of you? Ellen Levy. And Ellen Levy, thank you. And from Beth Shalom Memphis, Susan Levko. And from Congregation at Time Atlanta, Fern Mayharg and Melissa Sklar. From Synagogue Emanuel Charleston, Gloria Adelson. From Temple Beth L. Birmingham, Arlene Fisher and Sue Lishkoff. And from West End Nashville, Ellen Vinogar Potash and Marsha Ramey. And now I would like to introduce Renee Ravage. Um, I'm pleased to introduce you to you, our Southern Region consultant, Renee Ravage. Not only is she providing us with support today, she will also be providing other trainings for us throughout the year. I now turn the meeting back to Jennifer for the business meeting. Hello. Thank you, Susan. We've got some great people who are on here today. So I'm gonna start this meeting for our open board meeting today with the discussion of the minutes. At our last open board meeting in Charleston, South Carolina, there, were, there was no new or old business covered. Since that time, we will have some new business for this year later on, but there was nothing voted on, so we'll let you know that. For my president's report, during the last two years, since the last meeting, I've attended international programming with education meetings, Torah fund cabinet meetings, international board meetings. We've also had regional monthly president meetings. I visited sisterhoods in person and via Zoom, and along with the current board, kept contact with our sisterhoods, the ones that we could contact. Now, we're gonna move on to the treasurer's report. Did Madeline make it on here yet? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madeline. Yes. Turn it over to her. Hi, everyone. As you can see, we had some credits uh, this month. There was one from WSEJ for our second quarter allocation of $450. Many deposits, which totaled $350, which were for a leaf for PGW that was um, donated to Beth L in Birmingham in her memory. A donation of $54 from AYS or Waze for our conference. And the debits for this month was the plaque that um, will be received later on. And that was a cost of $89.43. And the, ch the check that I sent to Bethel in Birmingham for the PGW leaf, which was a total of 425. Although there were donate more donations um, that were made privately to Arlene Fisher of Bethel. So the, the actual leaf was a total of 450, but only 425 came out of our treasury, which left an, a total operating account balance to date of $6,280.66. Next. 
Our enrichment account had no activity. We have not charged for this conference, so we didn't have anything going in or going out. And um, it was the same as last month, the total enrichment account balance to date. This is uh, actually to April 7th, 2021, is $8,010.30. Respectfully submitted. Guess you're waiting for me. You're muted, Jen. I'm muted. Jen is. Now she isn't. Thank you, Madeline, for your report. We really appreciate that. Now we're going to go on to Jody Beck with the Sisterhood Support Report. Hey, everybody. Um, just real fast. Thank you, Jen. Um, just wanted to say it's been a pleasure to work with you and everyone this year, um, trying to reach out, being ready to answer questions or find the answers if I didn't know, and just to be here to help with the needs of Southern Region. And that's it. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate everyone who was on the board. Now we're going to move to Arlene Fisher for our communication report. Okay. As the communications secretary, I was responsible for sending out acknowledge acknowledgements whenever a donation was made by Southern Region or an individual. These acknowledge acknowledgements are in the form of a card printed on cardstock featuring the logo for Southern Region, which is a magnolia. Since assuming the responsibilities in 2018, I have sent 19 in memory, one speedy recovery, and one mazel tov. It's been my pleasure to serve in this position. Respectfully submitted, Arlene Fisher. Thank you so much, Arlene. Now we're going to move over to Helen again while we get our Torah Fund report. Hi, so, so this year, our goal, um, our total goal was $58,780, of which so far we have submitted uh, $39,563. So we are 67% of the way there. Um, and we just have a few months to go. So um, they are running probably about a month behind and in getting the information um, to me accurately, maybe a little longer sometimes, but roughly about a month behind. Um, with that, that's for our re regular tour fund campaign. For spaces, uh, our region has donated uh, so far this year, $2,848, which is significantly better than last year's uh, $36. So I'm glad to see us doing that. And, um, we have at least four sisterhoods that are right at or have already exceeded their um, their tour fund goals, which I'm really proud proud of them to that they've done that already. Um, I know that there's several sisterhoods I've spoken to that are still mailing in their money and getting collecting everything, which is I know a challenge during this time of um, this COVID time. Um, do want to say that some interesting things have come up from our meetings. We are now um, doing e-cards instead of paper cards, at least for now, until COVID is over. Um, you can get those e-cards on our website. Am I, can I share a screen? Mm, I'd like to share a screen. I'd like to know where, where that is. Hold on. Hang on, sorry. It's at the bottom of your... Oh no, I, I see where it's saying share screen. It's just not sharing the screen I wanted to share. I have to make sure it's on. Okay, there you go. It wasn't showing me the right screen. I want to show you that this screen. 
Um, this is the torque on screen. As you can see, the cards are still real pretty and they're very reasonably priced. You can do your own text and submit it very easily and your recipient will get a card in the, in the, uh, in their email. There is no additional cost to that other than what you would normally pay for a card and your sisterhood does get credit for that purchase, which was something that is new. They only started that, I believe last month. So at least three sisterhoods have received their um, confirmation that they are getting credit for those cards being mailed or emailed, I guess is what I should say. Um, if you haven't seen the new Torah Fund page, it's real easy to get to. Giving can be now done online. You do not have to mail in a check. It will be much faster to send it in online. So your membership can uh, do so uh, fairly easily and fairly quickly. You still have to get them the pin when you get the right pin. Um, I don't know how to stop there. There, there you go. Um, additional pins are being ordered. I think you heard that at the beginning of um, the conference. Um, these they're completely out of. So there's a lot of sisterhoods who have yet to receive any of them. And the ones that have um, the pearls or gems in it, additional ones of those are also being made. Um, we will continue with this into with the same pin into the next year. However, we will have new goals from our new Torah Fund Vice President. Um, anything, any questions? I'm good. I have a question. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, tell me what spaces, what that means. Ah, so spaces. Um, so spaces is, I have my little cheat sheets over here. I thought maybe everybody already knew that, so I will not. Spaces is a program that we are, yeah, that the, 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 that um, Sisterhood is doing, what um, Women's League is doing. It's a specific campaign just for two things. One is for the JTS uh, study space in the new um dorms that they have and the other one is for a program at Ziegler that is um that they actually already started it but it's going to fund it and continue funding it on gender bias and harassment so it's going to be called Women's League Institute on Gender Bias and Harassment and so those are the two two different spaces that we've created one one is a real space and one is a virtual space so I, I, how do we how do we donate to that, Helen? So you can do you can use that same web page that I just showed you. Uh huh. I'm gonna share it one more time, and you can donate through through creating new spaces campaign, and it's right here. And you can just do give now, and I can click here, and so you can see it. Um, I have been using that as a um, donation in honor of somebody or in memory of somebody. Um, it works really nicely. It's just something a little bit different than just the regular Torah fund, um, which is also good, but it's very specific. And I think um, it's a really great way to leave a legacy for the future. Okay. And the other question I have is that, because um, it's been when, a couple of years ago when I was in your position, mm -hmm. if we've actually paid, since everybody's paying their money to national mm -hmm. um if you have gotten a pin ordered through national because mm -hmm. you're getting it are you are the the local um sisterhoods getting credit yes okay yes they are and and there should be um many of you have received a report um if there's a update to the report i try to send them out i don't get to them every single month um, so if you haven't gotten a report from me in a month, please let me know. I got one just a few days ago, so I can send that out um, after the meeting. If there's anyone here that is doing Torah Fund, I prefer to send it only to those individuals. Okay. One thing our coordinator had a question about, um, she thought that the report only included those at the level uh to receive a pin and not smaller donations is is there a separate report for that 
No, it does include the smaller donations if they were sent in uh, and not. So some sisterhoods are um, aggregating the smaller donations and sending in one check. And if that happens, then there's no individual's name on it. Okay, well, we will look into that. Thanks. Right. But now I will say that in order to receive a um, um, information, uh, the tax receipts, um, it has to be given directly to th to Women's League. It can't be done through your own sisterhood unless your sisterhood issues the tax receipts. Excuse me, Helen, that's not true. I paid through my sisterhood and got a tax receipt. That's because your check went directly to them, to Women's League. Oh. It wasn't... It wasn't it didn't hit your sisterhood's bank account and then right. they, yeah, they just collected the check and mailed it as one unit. Right. Thank you. And if you have any questions, just feel free to send me an email afterwards and I'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you so much, Helen, and thank you guys for all your questions. Before we move on to um, the nominating committee report, I would just like to see, are there any other questions of any of the reports or any of us that we have presented so far? Okay, I don't see anyone with a hand raised. So we are going to go ahead and um, I'm gonna return it over to Regina Newman, an absolutely wonderful mentor and um, who has worked, she and her committee have worked so hard to um, give us the slate. So thank you so much, Regina, and it's all yours. As chair of the nomination committee, it is my pleasure to present the slate of officers for the 2021-2024 term. As president, Susan Steinberg from Augusta, Tora Fund Vice President, Judy Geary, also from Augusta, Tora Fund Chair, Barbara Hellman from Memphis, Conference Vice President Rini Montaigne from Atlanta, Beth Shalom, Communication Vice President Helen Crowley from Nashville, Communications Chair Lori Beth Sussman, who is an individual member living in um, Mississippi, uh, Sisterhood Support Vice President is Hillary Rosenbaum from Charlotte. Treasurer, Marsha Ramey from Nashville. Recording Secretary, Barbara Herman from Nashville. And Corresponding Secretary, Martha Siegel from Nashville. According to the bylaws, to our bylaws, nominations may be made by petition. Having, re having received no such nominations, it is a joy for me as chair of the nominating committee to ask the secretary to cast a unanimous ballot to elect these outstanding, dedicated and committed women as the officers and nominating committee, as, um, what did I write here? Dedicated women as the um, officers and, and nominating committee of Southern Region of Women's League for Conservative Judaism for the 2021-2024 term. Um, Barbara Herman. Um, will you accept that? Please unmute so you can let them know that you will. Barbara, can you unmute? I had too many choices to press. Okay, yes, I accept the slide. Okay, thank you. And you will put that in the, the minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, once again, I thank the nominating committee members, Madeline Gimble, Ellen Van Oka Potash, and Jennifer Wood for their excellent work developing this wonderful slate of women. Thank you so much, Regina. Thank you to everyone for being here. Um, let me ask a question of our parliamentarians that are on here. Do we need to do a delegate count since we have everyone registered and we know who's in the meeting right now? 
is there a problem with us doing that? Not, not having the delegate count since we have everyone in here. Barbara can tell us how many people from each synagogue, each sisterhood registered. So I'll turn it over to her and let her tell us how many are, are registered for this. Got it. Okay, there are a total of 62 people. What? There are now a total of 62 people registered. From Montgomery, there's one. Birmingham, four. Charleston, one. Greenville, one. Woman's Temple Israel, four. Cheska Amuna, four. Nashville, six. AA, two. Beshalom 16, Eitz Chaim 4, Beshalom Memphis 3, Augusta 14, Individual 2, Mobile 0, Chattanooga 0, Sherith Israel 0, and B'nai Torah 0. Thank you very much. So now we'll move on to old business. Is there anything from the floor that is old business? Okay, let's move on to new business. For new business, the, um, the board is bringing a motion to all of you and I'm going to turn it back over to Regina Newman so she can present you with that. Uh, the Light of Torah was established in 1987 to honor those women in our region who helped their sisterhood reach their goals. Everyone honored through the years has been selected by members of their own sisterhood as the one who reflects their vision of the outstanding sisterhood woman. Originally, these awards were presented at conferences and paid for by the region. At the 2016 conference in Birmingham, Alabama, a motion was brought to the floor by the past region president's committee to have the individual sisterhoods take over the pres presentation of these awards with, uh, with the region presenting a certificate to each winner at their individual presentations. It was suggested at the time that the award being presented at home among friends and family would be more meaningful for the recipients. In addition, the fact that the region no longer had the funds to support this program was uh, mentioned. The, court, the current board has watched this program struggle over the last five years and therefore presents the following motion. We move that the Light of Torah presentation be returned to the region conferences not to be awarded the same year as the PGW award, which is once every three years. These Light of Torah awards will be supported by a $36 donation from each sisterhood. The criteria will remain one woman per sisterhood per year. The selection of these outstanding women will continue to be by members of their own sisterhoods as the one who reflects the vision of the outstanding sisterhood woman. Thank you, Regina. May I have a second for this? A second. A second. Wonderful. Steinberg. Thank you so much. Now, is there any discussion from the floor? This is Barb, and I, I really think this is a great idea because I think it really stimulates uh, involvement in the local level, but does introduce that individual to what's going on in the region. So it's a nice sort of way to get the communication going back and forth. And I, I think it, it has been, uh, that has been lacking over the past three years. Okay, thank you for that. Any other discussion? Marcia Ramey from Nashville. Um, what, uh, what is the $36 donation used for? I mean, what kind of expenses are associated with giving an awards if it's a certificate? It's a plaque. It has, a plaque. in, in, the, past, in oh. the past, it was a, um, 
it was not a plaque, but similar to a plaque. And the reason that uh, it was certificates over the last five years was that the sisterhood was presenting what they wanted to present as a uh, award, whether it was a plaque, whether it was a bunch of flowers, it didn't, you know, that was their decision. But in the past, we have always given uh, some type of award that can sit on, uh, be put on a wall or sit on a, a uh, on display somewhere. Okay, so this would return uh, the process to that previous right. process. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Can you give us the background on why it was changed the first time? Um, that's what I was uh, talking about in the beginning that um, the um, it was felt that the we, there were so many sisterhoods and many of the sisterhoods were having duplicate winners or triplicate winners and it was costing the region quite a bit of money. Uh, we have a uh, Usually we have one of the dinners don't, uh, dedicated to that um, that night that are, and that's when the awards are presented. And we just were not having the funds anymore. I mean, the, 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 the money, the, you know, was drying up. And so we thought, we talked about, it, it was discussed for quite a while within the um, past president's meeting and um, I was not past president at that time, um, but they um, said that, you know, a lot of the people also were not, um, uh, I'm sorry, I, my phone just rang and interrupted me. Um, I, um, a lot of the people, the winners of that award at that time were not showing up at conference. So that entailed even more money uh, mailing their plaques to them. And the, the part of pre presenting it to these people, just it had um, kind of, it lost its purpose. And we just kind of think that maybe at this time it will um, come back. The purpose will come back and, and we will see more of that. Anything further? Yes, may I say something? Please. Um, a little past history. The reason we started doing that was to increase the number of people that attended our conferences. And I thought it worked really well for a lot of years. And it looks like it's not working anymore. Of course, right now, of course it wouldn't work. But that was the main reason was to for sisterhoods to bring a lot of their uh, honorees, friends and congregants to our conference. Thank you, Marilyn. Anyone else? Okay, G, would you please put up the um, Bodhi thingy? And I have a question. So first it was to encourage people to come, then it became too expensive. Right. So now with doing this $36, it makes it self-sustaining? Yes. Got it. Thank you. Yes. And if we ever get to meet together again, it might encourage people to come. <laughs> right. If a, if a sisterhood were to choose not to have an honoree, would they be exempt from the $36? <laughs> I would say yes. I love you. Bye. And my question is just the opposite of that. If they had like two winners, would no. they be expected to pay no, twice? No more two. Two. No more yeah, two. they. Oh, you can only have one winner. There'll be one. The motion says only one. Okay. And that's why we put that in there to discourage to avoid that. Okay. Yeah. 
Any further discussion? I have a question. Okay. Okay, Jen. So we pay our sisterhood dues um, to Women's League and do the different ch and all of the uh, different chapters. Um, how many different chapters do we have in uh, um, in Southern Branch now? In Southern mm -hmm. Branch, we have mm -hmm. 17. Okay, so do we get money back from sub, from uh, Women's League? Uh, do we get a certain uh, yeah, that's per real. capita back from Women's League? Yes. For yes. our 17 chapters? Yes. Well, Women's League gives it to the region. Um, right. And that is um, a, our allotment. And um, they give it to the region and it goes into our operating budget. And um, that, that is it. One thing that we have about conferences is our conferences have to be self-sustaining. So mm -hmm. we cannot actually take money out of the operating budget or the enrichment fund. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. with our enrichment fund, we do have scholarships that we can provide for people to, um, to, to go to conferences and things like that. So that's kind of how the money with your per capita dues that go in, it supports all the women's league programming that they do. It also supports you being able to have um, a consultant come in, um, all, all of those kind of trainings, right. things, things like right. that. And, and then they give us, they give us a, what word to use there, not stipend, but we, they give uh, us an allotment. Jen, just one other point is that when um, we receive the allotments, we also receive guidelines about how the money can be spent. Yes. And that is spending it on something like this is not one of the ways that we can spend the allotment money on. Correct. No, right. I understand that. I just wanted to see since, uh, you know, we're, we, I know the Women's League is supposed to be getting us a portion of the money from the per capita if, um, if, you know, what, what, uh, um, and, and somebody had said before uh, in the treasurer's report, I think it was, they said that there was no charge for this conference, but there, there was a charge for the conference. The money did not come out of our operating account. Um, we have spent no money out of there except for that, um, the PGW award. So I think, and Madeline can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what she meant by that. Um, everyone has paid their money for the conference. Conference has to break even. Um, and if we don't, it, it'll be taken care of. However, um, you paid and then the, the host sisterhood right now is taking care of the finances to, to pay for our technology and, and everything else. Right. So that, that, that cost is, did not come out of our operating budget. So no money has come out for this conference at this point. Very good. Maurice, do you have any other questions that I can answer? Did I explain enough for you? Uh, no, I think I, you know, I just was uh, unclear as um, I know that, you know, they were, um, you know, the, the Light of Tour Award was very, um, was a very nice program at, you know, like y'all said at one time. And um, I'm, I'm glad to see that you guys are bringing that back. Right. And um, I think that uh, asking each congregation third to pay thirty six dollars is very reasonable. Can I can I call for the vote? Yes. Okay. You will see the motion regarding the light of Torah should be up on your screen. You can click yes, no, or abstain. Once you click one of those, then you click the submit button. So if everyone can please do that now. Uh, Jen, uh, it, mine has end to polling. Is that the same thing as submit? submit? G. No. Don't do anything, Helen. Okay, I'm thank you. you off. Sorry. Okay, that's because I'm a presenter, right? Okay, has everyone voted? No, not yet. Wait. No, I, I don't know if I did because it came up a few times and I voted and but I never th saw the submit so 
Sorry. It's the American way to submit it. <laughs> yeah, I might have voted twice. I think it came up, it said 100%, and it nobody, I didn't submit, it just came up at 100%. Can you do it again? Yeah. Okay, I can tell you now that we, we do have, um, we have 47 of 64 of you that have voted. Can you do it again, please? Some of the people on are not, some of the 64 are not. I, I realize um, that, they're, they're, they're not, yes. So oh, Jen, do you want to do it again? Um, Can we? Yes, Let, okay. we'll just type out what we've got and then just completely do it again. Okay, okay. sounds good. Thank you. Poll was launched. Just for those who didn't see submit, you'll see submit after you check yes or no. Do we assume we don't do it again if we already did it? No. No, we do it again. Everybody does it again. Everybody does. Do it again. This is our first time voting online like this. So no, we'll I understand. Okay. Just didn't want to stuff the ballot box here. <laughs> Come on, Ellen. <laughs> <clears throat> well, most of the folks are in Georgia, so you know the claim is that that's what oi, they've oi, already oi. done. So. <laughs> I actually worked to get out the vote for Georgia in the uh, in the senatorial race and the. The district that they sent me to, I heard a lot of suspicion about voting machines and stuffing ballot boxes. Oh, but you were in the boonies. I was. <laughs> we were up in Calhoun. That that discussion of the voting machines is going to cost somebody a lot of money. <laughs> okay. Just Listen. Remind, want to remind you, you're being recorded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not running for office like that last lady suggested. I actually, you know, uh, you can vote me out as treasurer. So. Okay, we, we, we are sharing the results of the vote. And I will say I'm one of the abstains because I, I cannot vote as president. So I wanted to get the poll off my screen. So yes, yeah. letter to us, coming back to the region. Thank you all for your vote. There were absolutely no no's there. That's, that's amazing, great. All right, so now we're going to move on to um, that, concludes our meeting um, for our, all of our business. We're gonna move on to Backpack Buddies with Ron Robbins. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good, uh, I'm Ron Robbins and uh, I'm here with my bride of 52 years. Her name is Samra. And we are the co-champions of the Backpack Buddies program. This is the brochure that we use. I hope you can read it. It says, in essence, that uh, uh, because hunger doesn't take the weekend off. This is a program that Samer and I started in Savannah in 2011. When we moved to Atlanta and joined Congregation Beth Shalom, we brought the program with us. In essence, it's a program to feed children at Title I schools on the weekend. A Title I school, for those that don't know, uh, is a system that feeds the children free breakfast and free lunch every day, Monday through Friday. The problem it being that these children have very little or nothing to eat on the weekend. So we developed our program to provide food for these children, uh, and Samer will cover those in just a second. Um, we're going to leave a little time at the end for any questions you have. I know there's several synagogues in Atlanta that are already doing this program. So uh, this is not new to you, but we would love for any of you to call us at the end uh, or email us, we'll provide that with you. And we'd love to try to help you get this started uh, in your organization. Sam? It's a super program. It needs a champion, but you need to find a school, a Title I school, and the counselors there will help you identify the children that need to be fed. 
these are the children that are getting free breakfast and lunch. So it's not that hard to identify them. Uh, the food is that we give them is purchased usually from a local food bank or any other retailer that you can find the food. Um, you need volunteers once a week or every other week to pack the food. And usually that's on Wednesday or Thursday so that the food can be taken to the schools and given to the children so they can take it home on Friday. Uh, before COVID, the food was being put into a backpack so that um, it was an easier way for the children to carry it. And it also it wasn't as obvious that they were taking home food on the weekends. Uh, now, the food is being put into plastic bags and given to the kids. Um, they are given single serve, non-perishable food. I have a picture, which might, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not, let's see, of the types of things that we put in the backpacks. It's usually four protein, two vegetables, two fruit, two milk, two juice, two breakfast items, and two snacks. So basically what we're doing is giving them three meals a day plus snacks and liquid for Saturday and for Sunday. Um, we, we'll be glad to help any organization get started. Uh, the, you know, the, the travesty of us sending bags home on the weekend to a child is that that bag feeds more than just that child. Uh, we've seen people over the summer, we packed out of our garage because we closed up at the synagogue for COVID. And as we took the bags to a central location for the families, you would see children, you would see grandparents, you would see parents. Um, it's just amazing in this country that one out of every five children goes to sleep hungry every single night. And you ask yourself, how can that be? in the most prosperous country in the world. And yet 20% of our children go hungry. Uh, Sam talked about the requirements that you need. It's really a very easy program, but it takes a champion. Somebody has to stand up and say, I will coordinate the entire program. You need to get your rabbi involved. Rabbi Zimmerman was great. He supported us from the beginning. He talks about it on the pulpit on Shabbos. Uh, you need your, your rabbi involved. You need your board of directors involved. Uh, you'll need volunteers. You need some portion of your facility designated to store the food uh, and pack the food. And the reason I say in your facility, there, there are a lot of uh, organizations that do it outside their facility. But one of the beauties about Backpack Buddies is not only feeding the children, but it gets people through the doors of the synagogue that otherwise would not attend, would not go through the doors of the synagogue if it weren't for the high holidays. We have unbelievable response to our program. We pack every week, but we have Sisterhood packs one week, Men's Club packs one week, the Religious School packs one week, and we always have a bar or bat mitzvah designate Backpack Buddies as their project and their family packs all, all uh, once a week too. We have designated deliverers uh, who come to the synagogue, pick up the food and take it uh, to the designated schools. Um, I think that's about it unless, uh, oh, where, where do you get the money, the money to fund the program? Um, good question. That's, that's one of the difficult things just to begin with. Uh, you need some upfront money, and uh, Sam and I have a foundation that we are willing to consider getting any organization started. We've been very successful over the last year. Uh, we started this program very small in 2017, and in 2019 and 20, we signed up 17 other organizations in the Atlanta area, not all of them synagogues, several Methodist churches, the Assistance League, the Rotary Club, the YMCA, and even a retirement facility uh, here in Atlanta. So we would be more than happy to help you get started. Um, you need some donations, and we also keep a barrel at the synagogue for food donations. 
And the sisterhood has been great about getting us food uh, to provide for the children. Uh, let me give you our number in case you're interested in trying the program. Uh, if, if need be, we'd come out and help you get it started. But my email is ronaldrobbins, R-O-B-B-I-N-S, 034 at gmail.com. And Samra's is Samra, S-A-M-R-A, Robbins, at gmail.com. If there are any questions, we'd, we'd love to hear from you and hopefully get you started on this program. Hey, I say something. Um, I congratulate you for doing this. Knox County in Knoxville, Tennessee has been doing this through the school system for maybe 30 years. The very same program and it's really United Way who carries the ball here. So I would think in our area, it would just be a duplication because it is really being handled every single week. Um, when I was in the schools, I were, helped them with it. When I was on United Way, I helped with it. And it's really um, being done and the um, little difficulty of the program, and it isn't much of a difficulty, is to identify the children so they're not felt um, like second class citizens when they're called to come up and pick up their pack or whatever it is. But um, I think we're beyond that now. And um, again, I'd like to compliment you on doing it um, in this area, I think it would be just a duplication. Marilyn, thanks for the comments. Uh, I will tell you, there are, there are schools that aren't Title I schools that have children that still have a need. And uh, I mean, we live, we live in Dunwoody, one of the most affluent areas uh, in Metro Atlanta. And yet we have a school, Kingsley Elementary, that is less than a mile from our synagogue, and 70% of the children need food on the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a school out there that United Way doesn't, doesn't hit, that a backpacks program or backpack in a blessings doesn't hit. Um, it, it doesn't hurt to call a school and to let them know. I will tell you what you said about the children being uh, very conscious of taking home the food. We have found that in so many of the schools that we work with, they have taken it as a rite of passage. They love it. They almost wave it in other children's faces. So they're no longer embarrassed because everybody in the school knows that kids need food and they're hungry. So uh, the kids don't even mind anymore. They get in line and everybody knows why they're in line. When we deliver the food, they know what we're doing on Wednesday or Thursday when we deliver it to the school. So uh, just because there's another organization in your town assisting uh, feeding children or feeding families, there's always going to be some ch kids left out that if you just contact the school, you might just find 10 or 20 or 30 children that need help on the weekend. And that's all, that's all we try to do. And I was just gonna say, I am the education director at Best Shalom um, and work with the Robins uh, to, we, our students pack once a month. Um, it has been an incredible learning experience for our children. And before they start packing the first time, we go over the program, we explain why they're packing. And it's amazing, but over the years, we've actually had two children raise their hand and say, I have received those bags. I get it from my school. Um, they feel comfortable enough to say it in front of their peers. And it, it, it's, an, it's a learning opportunity for our students so that those students at school that need it will not be looked down upon by our students or any other ones that are working on this program. Can you repeat the emails again? Yes. Uh, she can put them. She Barbara, can they're in the chat. The, Barbara, they're in the chat. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't see that. Thank you. Uh, one of the things we didn't cover was that it to pack takes about an hour. It takes five or six or seven people, depending on how many show up, and they can usually pack 
a hundred bags in an hour. We, when we first started, we had the preschool came in to pack. Uh, these are three and four year olds that came. It took about two and a half hours, but just to watch them go through the process was was worth the price of admission. Help yourself. Delicious. It just needs to be warm. Both so much. This is this is really an amazing program. It's it, it it's so nice. Um, thank just, you guys for sharing. I do want to say it's important to recognize. I mean, all of our synagogues are in. Um, urban areas, but supporting this program, there are rural schools that are, I mean, our entire school system is a Title I because we have more than 70% of the kids are in need. So it's a real problem. And I think it's something that the, they're trying to take on and, and this new um, American recovery plan with the monies going may be really useful if there's some way we can figure out how to make certain that the money goes for food. Can I say something? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, first, I just want to say thank you. And don't assume it should only be for rural students. I grew up in by a single mother with a family raising four kids. I was on the special uh, lunch program at school and would have done anything to have had food on the weekends. That was many, many years ago. But um, I grew up in New York, Long Island, totally affluent area. But um, you know, my mom was trying to raise four kids alone. So with COVID, I think there's a lot of people also where their whole lives have changed, where you know, hardworking people now have just been hit so hard with this. So you really don't know which students are the ones. I think they've been so. really hard also. Anyway, just wanted to say thank you and share that. I want to thank you as um, conference VP. This is a wonderful program. Um, and we have chosen it as our mitzvah project. And I am sorry that I did not um, add up the I time. did. You did? I did? It's almost $700. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. And it's Being a little so bit generous. more because a few more registrations came in after I added, but it's around that. That'll feed seven children for a whole year. <laughs> right. Wonderful. And um, we are going to dispense with the break and we are going to go straight into the PGW award. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hello, it's so wonderful to see everyone, even though we're still in virtual time, I'm excited that we're able to all be here together. And today we are celebrating Regina Newman, who is this year's recipient of the Phyllis Grusin Weinstein Award. Uh, today is April 18th, 6th of ER 5781. And at this time, I would like to introduce the president of Southern Region, Jen, take it away. Good afternoon. Southern Branch of Women's League for Conservative Judaism first presented the Phyllis Grusin Weinstein Award on April 15, 1975. It was presented to Phyllis Grusin Weinstein in honor of her extraordinary involvement in Southern Branch. She was the founder and served as the first president of our branch, now a region. The first award read as follows. The Scroll of Honor is proudly presented by the Southern Branch of Women's League for Conservative Judaism to Phyllis Grusin Weinstein. Founder, First Branch President, gifted national leader and distinguished daughter of Israel as a token of acknowledgement and abiding appreciation of her continuing dedicated service to conservative Judaism. Presented in conference assembled in Birmingham, Alabama, April 15, 1975, for PR, 5735. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you have excelled them all, from Proverbs 31. The award, established by Southern Branch of Women's League for Conservative Judaism, to recognize dedicated and continuing service and commitment to conservative Judaism, continues to call attention to excellence on a triennial basis. 
The award is known as the Phyllis Greeson Weinstein Award, a constant living reminder of a worthy leader and the cause we serve. Thank you, Jen. At this time, we will be watching a film that was presented in 2018 um, that was narrated by Phyllis Grusin Weinstein. Unfortunately, Phyllis passed away at the beautiful age of 100 very recently, and we feel her loss tremendously. But hopefully this video will bring to life the vibrant person that she was and will give you a beautiful history of our region. Dear friends, it is very nice to greet you through the medium of this technology. I'm sorry I cannot be there in person to just brief you somewhat on the early beginnings of the Southern Branch of National Women's League, now the Southern Region. Um, it was early in the decade of the 50s that um, our congregation, Temple Beth Fell in Birmingham, uh, uh, welcomed a guest, a, a professor from the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, representing the United Synagogue. He was traveling in the South to um, acquaint uh, himself and the others with the newly affiliated members to the United Synagogue. And so while he was here and in the discussion, I asked, is there a women's organization that's associated with the United Synagogue? And he said, of course there is. It's a National Women's League that was established by Matilda Schechter some years before and had um, a limited number of chapters at that time, but mostly in the um, uh, in the eastern region, but uh, it was growing. And so I asked him to send me material about the, about the organization, and which he did, and which I followed up on, and learned that uh, that our area, that is the southern uh, states um, that are now associated, with the exception of North Carolina, to um, southern region, were uh, part of the southeast region, southeast branch at that time, of Women's League, and um, which in included Florida. So um, we um, made contact with the, um, with the organization, with the southeast br region, branch, and, um, and attended some conferences, uh, mainly in, in uh, South Florida, and um, the concentration of leadership was completely, almost completely in the southern part of Florida, or the middle Florida, and um, it did not uh, include any um, anyone from the this our area, which is now the southern branch, and. Um, so it, it was just really very obvious that uh, there was very little growth that could take place in our area, um, plus the numbers alone. There were enough um, the, uh, numbers of Jewish people in one square block of Florida, of Miami, that there was in the state of Alabama. So our needs and our, and our programming and our, our li way of living is completely different, and uh, we did not have the, the wealth of uh, rabbinic leadership that they had in the South, nor did we have the wealth of educators and so on. So we had to, we felt, strike out on our own. So we asked National if, if this was possible, and um, so they probably thought we were <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, unusual. So um, they sent uh, uh, an observer to Birmingham, and we discussed it from national, a national person, and we discussed at length the possibility of um, our area becoming a um, branch in training. At that time, there were 
um, other um, sisterhoods affiliated, namely um, West End Synagogue of Nashville, Jeharis Israel of, uh, of uh, Columbus, Georgia, uh, Charleston Temple Emanuel, and the congregation in Savannah. So we did not know that they were members. We had no connection. There was no network. And uh, consequently, uh, upon um, becoming affiliated with the uh, Southeast Branch, we uh, became acquainted uh, with, with this information. Um, following that, uh, at that time, there were no Atlanta congregations affiliated with Women's League, and um, uh, that was just about it. So we, um, in Birmingham, in 1954, had hosted the Southeast uh, Women's League uh, co Annual Conference. And, um, and it was at that time, in 1954, that observers from Ahavath Akim in Atlanta did attend. So right from the beginning, right for, as we were a branch in training, we had our spring conference. And the first one was at, uh, in Nashville at West End Synagogue. And Helen Freed, uh, the national president, was our, get, was our uh, uh, national consultant. She was spectacular. And she really set the stage for us in, in, in our uh, learning and in our growth. At that time, we concentrated on leadership training, on parliamentary procedure, and all these structure things to uh, begin an organization. And um, we um, had a wonderful conference. Um, and there were delegates then that came, observers rather, from Oak Ridge, Tennessee at that time. And um, they subsequently became affiliated. They had 50 members in Oak Ridge. And uh, where they lacked in numbers, they, they exceeded in quality. And they um, became very important in our organization. So consequently, we um, um, began to grow. And we uh, established an office in my house. Some people in the audience may not realize uh, before we had artificial intelligence what we uh, did to communicate. And it was um, something that we had to type individual letters. We had to run them off on a, um, a machine for duplicating them. We had to hand address envelopes. And um, we had to be very frugal with our uh, money as we had very few um, members in our branch and the per capita was not there. So consequently, telephone calls were very sparse. They, for me to call Bur uh, Montgomery, from Birmingham to Montgomery, cost money. And to call Mobile cost even more money. So if I had to call New York, it was much more money. So we had to be very, very careful what we did. Traveling was another expense that we had to be very uh, frugal about. And uh, we did what we could to, to maintain them. So, um, so after the spring conference in Nashville, we um, were able to, um, I guess, impress national to the extent that we were able to go out on our own. So that's what we did. So in, at the National Women's League National Conference in Minneapolis of 1960, we became uh, our own independent um, organization. And we were the southern branch of National Women's League. So we uh, uh, were fully affiliated and uh, were recognized as one of the branches of uh, of Women's League throughout the country. So we um, um, were progressed as far as membership was concerned. After observers uh, from AA in Atlanta came, they uh, affiliated, and um, we, other, we added other organizations along the way. 
So the membership has, um, has fluctuated to some extent, but um, we uh, maintain around 19 sisterhoods. Um, and Memphis became a member, Beth Shalom in Memphis, uh, and, um, and, and others. Along the way, there was some even just wonderful, committed women that made all of this happen. And um, so today, um, we thank goodness we still have those same, they are different, <laughs> but, but committed women who are able to carry on um, this uh, important work. And uh, so I, I thank you very much, and I want to um, I add my um, congratulations to Paula Copeland, who is, has Birmingham um, Connections, who has been selected for the women for the PGW Award this year. We're very proud of her. I was I do know Paula, whereas I do not know some of the more recent um, women who are active in our organization. But I'm very proud of what you do, and uh, wish you much luck. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paula Copeland, recipient 2018. This is our ode to the PGW recipients 2021. It really started in 61 when Southern Branch began. We were small but determined and we knew with commitment we would be grand. We welcomed all in the Southern style as the years went by. Our sisterhoods and our women certainly did multiply. In 1975, it was time to honor our founder with an award that would be given every two years, named the Phyllis Grusin Weinstein Award. Phyllis of blessed memory received it among throngs of cheers. Good morning, I'm Gloria Adelson, recipient of this award in 2011. In 77, we looked to Oak Ridge and a special someone we did find not only a scientist of highest degree, Betty Maskowitz of blessed memory was next in line. In 79, it was Ray Alice Cohn of blessed memory, a jewel and an inspiration to us all, a woman of valor and courage. She always stood straight and tall. In 81, we found a special person who has always been worth her weight in gold. It was none other than Fran Silver, always straightforward and bold. A Carolina gal was our next choice. She came from Charleston, a real Southern town. Charlotte Carish made us laugh and had fun, always keeping our spirits up, never down. Hi, I'm Barb Levin, and I'm the 2016 PGW winner. In, 19, in 85, we went to the Panhandle, our only Florida sisterhood. Beverly Kamen of Blessed Memory was the one who received the PGW award and stood proudly stood. In 1987, we gave the award to Goldie Ziff of Blessed Memory, a real lady always with a smile. Our very special Southern lass, her positive attitude was her style. I'm Barbara Esring, the recipient in 2013. Another Oak Ridge honoree, it was Myra Hoffman of Blessed Memory and 1989 was the year. She always was one to give good advice as well as offer a listening ear. In 91, Marcia Fish got the plaque. A Floridian gone to Georgia is her claim to fame. She loved sisterhood with all her heart, loved to train others in women's league's name. Hi, I'm Marcia Fish, recipient in 1991. Sarah Layden, a blessed memory from Columbia, received the award in 93. She always attended conferences and was always there when she needed to be. From Knoxville, Tennessee, she came. Marilyn Lieberman in 95 was the one. A teacher to all of us in every way, 
She knew how to lead us so our work got done. In 97, we honored Eileen Handler. She always kept us informed and up to date about our finances here and there, and her bills were never delayed or late. Marsha Minuskin received our praise. We presented her with the award in 99. She continues to give us good ideas and her creativity continues to shine. Hi, I'm Jackie Stevens and I received the PGW in 2007. In 2001, it was Barbara Whiston who we thanked. She has that special skill that makes us think and enjoy all we do and we never can get our fill. In 2003, PGW went to a special woman, June Schwartz, who answered our call, who came to us from the North, but used her experience to teach us all. Our next recipient was in 2005, Lillian Wellish of blessed memory who we adore. She represented us with honor and pride. Her Southern branch spirit shall always soar. Our 2007 nominee was Jackie Stevens, the name most heard from branch now called region, she is the best for her talents are many including singing like a bird. Hi, good morning. This is Barbara Whiston. I was the 2001 recipient. Catherine Morgan joined our ranks, our valued recipient for 2009. A librarian is her claim, but as web maven, she is really divine. In 2011, Gloria Adelson's the one, her sudden, grace and her charm do intrigue but all of her charm is clearly outshone by her dedication to region and league barbara ezring was the choice for 2013. for three years she was in the presidential seat her talents and abilities by region and league were seen yet with all she did she never missed a beat Hi, I'm Marsha Maniskin, recipient in 1999. We selected Dr. Barb Levin in 2016. In her career, she tends to physical needs, but for region and league, it, it's our spiritual health in which she leads. In 2018, Paula Copeland's our choice, a Marietta lady with multiple skills, therapist, artist, and yoga, of course, thoughtful and funny with lots of frills. In 2021 is a special year. Regina Newman, our presence always fill her, her presence always fill us with cheer. She has worked long and hard for Southern region. She is kind and special and we think of her dearly. So we come to the end of our story of our honorees, so we see. They all deserve our praise and admiration. May God bless them with good health, happiness, and glee. At this time, I would like to introduce Regina's family to say some wonderful words about their sister and mom. So first we will hear from Charlene Milstein and Marsha Raxter, and then following their talk, you will hear from Jody Beck, Jocelyn Saltz and Phil Newman, her children. So Charlene, take it away. Well, here I am and you have kind of stole my glory. Most of what I was going to say, you've already said. However, I will continue. I am Regina's oldest sister and it is indeed an honor to congratulate Regina for receiving the PGW award. Growing up, we had our shares of fights and arguments as sisters do, but all in all, I think she came out okay. She's been active in many fields of synagogue life as our parents and grandparents before us. Leadership and charity are very strong in our family history. She married the love of her life, Sydney, and together they had three children, which you will meet shortly. 
After returning from Florida, they became members of Beth Shalom Synagogue. And really, I think the rest is history. I'm so proud that she is being given the Phyllis Rusin Weinstein Award. Hello, I'm Marsha Raxter. I'm the baby of the family. Being younger by being the younger sister by six years, I don't know if I was truly aware of all Regina was involved with, but she was always active in our extended family as we celebrated Passover, Rosh Hashanah, and Hanukkah, as well as other holidays. Regina was very active in BBG when she was in high school. Her chapter was DJG, which stood for Devoted Jewish Girls. Although I was too young to know what she did then, I was very proud that she was my sister when I became a teenager and joined BBG. My chapter carried on the DJG name and Regina became one of our advisors. When Regina and her family moved to Florida, she maintained her Jewish home and lifestyle, as well as sending her daughters to a Jewish day school. Like our grandfather and father before her, Regina has always carried on the philanthropic work. She well deserves this honor, and I'm proud to be her sister. Congratulations. Today, Today is, your, is day. your day. You're off You're to off great, to great places. places. You're, You're off, off and, and away. away. Oh, the places you'll go. You have brains in your head. On the top, you have curls. You've already raised a boy and two girls. You slept us to practices, to band and to choir. You passed over that mountain, and you keep going higher. With Bob and your children, you've moved state to state. With your brains in your head, you always did great. With a bar mitzvah, two bots, you helped us to grow. But is that where you stopped your learning? Oh, no. Your love of learning, you've passed right on down. Three kids and six grands in three different towns. One more bat mitzvah was yet to be thrown. You never could as a kid, but you did it, now grown. You struggled and fought to learn all of that. You choose to further your learning, and you haven't stopped yet. When you joined Sisterhood, once more you rose high. You were ready for anything under the sky. You didn't just join. You rose to the top. Congratulations. Congregational prayers, you still didn't stop. Sisterhood president of Beth Shalom, that wasn't enough, just that alone. With the brains in your head and the curls in your hair, you accepted the job and became conference chair. Next region treasurer, ex the spot, yet still you continue to teach and be taught. Region parliamentarian, you keep the pace, making sure all the rules are in order and place. Oh, the places you'll go, how you seize the day, your international beat of WLCJ. International co-chair of membership too, when it comes to women's league, there's so much that you do. All these titles, you still work at the shul, selling things in the gift shop that keeps our homes full. Full of the candles, menorahs, talit, with your brains in your head and your shoes on your feet. And did you succeed? Yes, you did indeed. 98 and three fourths percent guaranteed. No one deserves this award more than you. And if this little rhyme can't convince you it's true, look through your screen, all the love that surrounds, though we can't be together, that feeling abounds. We watch you with awe, we watch you with pride, we watch and we see you with the eyes open wide. You have raised us three and taught us to Most soar. Sure. Be the best, the best we can be, but always but aim for more. more. Congrats. Congratulations. Congrats. Hey, Mom, congrats. Good job, G. Love you. Uh, so at this time, Regina, we are, I, I get to present you with a plaque. Um, we are so incredibly proud of you. Uh, all, you've worked so hard for your sisterhood, for our region. Um, your Judaism shines through in absolutely everything you do. You are just a kind, good, dear person who is always looking for the good in everyone else. Um, and we appreciate your presence in our organization more than we can say. Um, at this time, 
I'd like to present you with this plaque that you can hang in your home. You will also have a second plaque that has the names of all the PGW winners, um, which will go uh, uh, on in perpetuity. But for now, I'd like to read you this. Regina Newman, Phyllis Grusin Weinstein Award for Dedicated Continuing Service and Commitment to Southern Region Women's League for Conservative Judaism. 6 ER 5781, April 18, 2021. So I'd like to present this to you. Here you go. Thank you, Paula. As I told you earlier, I, this makes me all very nervous. <laughs> um, I really can't express my feelings uh, that I had when Paula called to tell me that I had been selected as the Phyllis Grusin Weinstein awardee this year. Phyllis Abba Shalom was such a dynamic, caring, and loving person, and I feel blessed that I got to know her. This call came not long after her passing bringing on just another lay, layer of feelings into the picture. I also felt and do feel honored to be considered in any way as special as she was and the 41 other women who have received this honor in the past were and are. I am sure we all have our stories of how we became involved with sisterhood and mine is probably no different than many. Marsha Fish approached me to do a small job, try to get people to fill in the interest surveys. Right, the next thing I knew, I was Sisterhood co-president and I was hooked. I've been told that I earned this award, but I couldn't have done this alone. I would not be here if it were not for the support and encouragement I received from my late husband, Sid, of blessed memory, my children, and from all of you. Most people know that my three children, their spouses, their boys, and my sisters are the most important things in my life. Of course, my friends and extended family are important too. And during this past year, I have come to think of Women's League and the women of Southern Region as extended family as well. I have taken advantage of some of the things Women's League has offered on Zoom. And now I feel I can travel anywhere in the country and Canada. Um, and I'll, you know, and meet a friend for lunch. This organization has offered a lot of personal growth for me as well as what we're so widely known for, supporting the ideals of Jewish life. And to quote that great philosopher, Snoopy, it's the friends you meet on the path that make the journey worthwhile. To all of my friends and family who have supported me, have been there for me and stepped up to help me, have been on the path, and to all of those whose footsteps I have followed, I thank you. I know you must be getting tired of sitting, so I'm going to end shortly. To all of you who voted for me to receive this honor, don't go far. You'll be on the next PGW planning committee in three years. Thank you again for this very special honor. Congratulations. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for participating in this program. Um, and I want to thank all of you out there watching this uh, for joining us for this special presentation of this virtual but very, very real PGW award for Regina. Many women have done superbly, but you surpassed them all. I hope you all enjoyed that presentation. I want to just briefly thank 
Heather Blake and Justin Blake. Heather ran our Zoom. She's the engagement director at Eitz Chaim. And Justin did all the editing for us for that video. And I, I'm just so grateful that we were able um, to get together uh, via Zoom and do this all together. And I'm particularly grateful also to Barb Levin for heroically tracking down the video of Phyllis. We had a hard time getting that together, but we finally did and it all worked out seamlessly. So I hope you all enjoyed revisiting with Phyllis and I hope you enjoyed the presentation and enjoy the rest of the meeting. Jen, you sent me a text and I think uh, we should cut the break to a 10 minute break it's, or, or we can wait and start at 5.30. It's already 5.13. So let's cut it to a 10 minute break. That gives everyone time. No, let's keep a 15 minute break in there and come back at 5.30. That'll, I, that, I think we need, we need a little bit of a break. Um, thank you all so much, Paula. That was absolutely wonderful. So thank you, um, enjoy your break and we'll see you back at 5.30 for um, our installation program. Yeah. I am, I'm not a hat person. I don't know how to make them look <laughs> well, good. I know. <laughs> not it's like Barbara did at conference at convention. She looks phenomenal. I can't believe that hat still exists. Yep. <laughs> yep. Paula, these are real feathers. The itch. We yeah. have all taken good care of it since you started passing it down, and, and the boa too. Yeah. yeah. Susan, you get them. So we'll see you wear these soon. <clears throat> it's so fashionable. It's, awesome. it's not molting. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Um, I would like to start this next portion um, with a moment of silence. We have one of our delegates who uh, was signed up and um, she's not here with us. So we're going to have a moment of silence for Audrey Maddens. She was an amazing woman who will most definitely be missed. I don't remember going to a conference without her. And I remember her being at every convention. So the information for her shiva was sent out last Friday. Um, if you need more information, let me know. I can, I can resend to you. Now we'll have a moment of silence. Okay, thank you. Now let's continue with our program. I am going to pass this off to Renee. Thank you, Jen. And first, before we begin the installation, if you are on the outgoing board or the incoming exec committee that was announced by Regina earlier today, please be sure you have your camera on so that we can spotlight you in the appropriate places. And then I also want to say thank you all for including me in your conference. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. So um, I have a new group of friends. All right, so let's begin. Earlier today, we heard about women who affected change in the past and how we can be the change in the present. With strength and splendor, Jewish women as agents of change is an outstanding book by Lisa V. Kogan Ellison, former education director of Women's League and one of our speakers this morning. The book features extraordinary North American Jewish women who during these past two centuries have affected change. I will be highlighting a few of them in the course of the installation. And FYI, uh, these names were chosen before Lisa's presentation was heard and some of the names will be the same. There are many women in the Southern region who have affected change in the past three years and others who will take on that charge in the next three. We honor them tonight. It is my pleasure to now recognize the following outgoing board members who have served from 2017 to 2020. 
And please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. PGW Chair, Paula Coughlin. Long Range Planning, Gloria Adelson. Training Services, Marsha Fish. Social Action, Hillary Rosenbaum. And nominations, Regina Newman. Ernestine Rose was born in Russia, the daughter of a rabbi. After moving to the United States, Ernestine embarked upon a crusade to improve conditions for the disenfranchised and the underprivileged. She spoke at the Women's Rights Convention in 1850, spoke out against slavery, and helped pass the New York legislation that allowed married women to own property and have equal guardianship of their children. In other words, she saw a need and worked to fulfill it, just like you. Toda Rabah for all you have done for your region. You are hereby discharged. Thank you. The following women have served as officers of Southern Region for the 2017 to 2020 term. Would you please spotlight the following outgoing officers? Sisterhood Support Vice President Jody Beck, Torah Fund Vice President Helen Crowley, Conference Vice President Susan Steinberg, Communication Secretary, Arlene Fisher, Administrative Secretary, Barbara Herman, and Treasurer, Madeline Gimbel. Rebecca Gratz was a religious educator and charity worker. She helped establish the Philadelphia Orphan Asylum, Jewish Foster Home, and the Hebrew Sunday School, which offered co-educational instruction. Like Rebecca, you have encouraged the Southern Region members to continue to learn through various programs and to give generously through Torah Fund, Backpack Buddies, and other worthy causes. To Daraba for all you have done for your members, you are hereby discharged. Okay, and once they're out, would you please now spotlight Jennifer Wood, outgoing president of Southern Region. Matilda Schechter was a woman of great accomplishments. She saw needs in her community and from that founded Women's League for Conservative Judaism, established the student house at JTS and created schools for Jewish girls offering vocational and religious training. Jennifer, you stepped up when there was a void and filled the needs in your community, Southern Region by providing leadership and support for all the women in your region. You worked hard to ensure communication within the region by visiting sisterhoods, phone calls, and the region newsletter. It has been my pleasure getting to know you these past eight months. With a deep debt of gratitude, we thank you for your commitment to Southern Region. You are hereby discharged. And you were, did you want to share any words with us? I just want to thank you all for putting up with me for three whole years, um, for communicating with me, for answering emails. Um, thank you very much. And thank you again, Jennifer. Okay, would you please spotlight the following incoming board member, mm. uh, Torah Fund Chair Barbara Hellman, Beth Shalom, Memphis, and we recognize Communications Chair Lori Beth Sussman, individual member who was unable to be with us today. Pauline Berman demonstrated great talent and energy as an institutional organizer. She is best remembered as the first woman in the nation to host her own radio program. Broadcasting from Orlando, Florida between 1930 and 1933, she spoke out against racial bigotry and prejudice. We hope you will use your voices to encourage members to participate in the many positive programs of Women's League. You are hereby installed. Okay, would you please spotlight the incoming officers, Marsha Ramey, Barbara Herman, and Martha Siegel. Okay, so our treasurer is Martha Ramey, West End Synagogue, Nashville. Reporting Secretary, Barbara Herman, West End Synagogue, Nashville. And Corresponding Secretary and new Women's League for Conservative Judaism International Board Member, Martha Siegel, West End Synagogue, Nashville. 
Felice Cohn was born in Carson City, Nevada. And FYI, it is Nevada if you live in Nevada, not Nevada. She was the fifth woman admitted to the Nevada bar, its first Jewish female attorney, and the fourth invited to practice law before the United States Supreme Court. She wrote Nevada's suffrage amendment, advocated for child labor reform and adoption laws, and opposed legislation that was discriminatory against women. You are responsible for ensuring the books and records are correct. We hope you will be as meticulous and as responsible as police. You are hereby installed. Thank you. And we are going to now install the incoming vice presidents. Torah Fund and new Women's League for Conservative Judaism International Board member, Judith okay, Hunt. Hunt. Yisharun Synagogue Augusta Conference, Rini Montaigne, Beth Shalom Atlanta, Communications, Helen Crowley, West End Synagogue, Nashville. Sisterhood Support, Hillary Rosenbaum, Women of Temple Israel, Charlotte. Gertrude Weil was born in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Attending Smith College provided Gertrude with a firm conviction that reform in the area of women's rights was necessary for civic health and well being. She was elected president of the North Carolina Equal Suffrage League in 1990. Oh. In the 1950s and 60s, joined social reformers in a direct challenge to racial segregation and discrimination. May you also advocate for what is right for your Southern region. You are hereby installed. Okay, and now we are going to spotlight Susan Steinberg, incoming region president. Susan, it's been a great experience working with you on the Southern Region Conference. The region will be lucky to have you as president. So now I have two presentations. The first is I'd like to present you with the new Women's League calendar diary. Devoted Jewish girls. Although I was too young to know what she did then, I was you. very proud that she was my sister when I became a teenager and joined BBG. Uh, somebody is carried on the DJ. You know who that is with the became one of our advisors. Video in the background. Lena and her family moved that is from the PG PGW Awards. Yeah. Uh, as well as sending her daughter. We're getting the recording and the calendar diary. Thank you. Okay, so this is the cover of the new, the front and back cover of the new calendar diary for Women's League, which will be available soon. And your copy had inside of it a spe special message from Debbie Kaner Goldich, International President of Women's League for Conservative Judaism. And the message is, may our flame continue to light up the conservative movement and may it light your way. And now my second presentation, it's time to officially present you with the region president's pin. While wearing this pin, you represent Southern Region and Women's League. May you enjoy your time as region president, growing your circle of friends as you travel virtually or in person around the region. And thank you, G, you can stop sharing. And now it's my honor to introduce Susan's congregational rabbi, Rabbi David Cyril of Addis Yeshurun Synagogue in Augusta, Georgia, who will install Susan Steinberg as your next Southern Region president. Rabbi. Thank you, Renee. Um, had a very short conversation with Susan last week about the values that she feels are important to her. It was the only question that I asked her in order to prepare for this installation. And she's not the first person that I've asked that question. Typically, I get a response that resembles a Megillah. There are so many good answers to that question Susan's answer was incredibly succinct. 
she simply remarked that her dad instilled in her the importance of tzedakah. Means giving charity, right? No, not really. It means righteousness. I see sisterhood in the same way that I see the synagogue. It should be a conduit of mitzvot, encouraging its members to fulfill the obligations of the Torah. How many times in the Torah are we commanded to share a portion of our harvest and also to reserve a corner of our fields for those in need? But today, here in Augusta anyway, most of us are not farmers and have no fields, but we find other ways to fulfill our duty. And I think that we do it really, really well. We are so blessed to live in this Eden that we call the Southeast region. We have beautiful cities, a wonderful climate, beaches, and mountains. Our lives are rich. We have everything a person needs to sustain a happy life. But we learn in the Torah that there is more to life than tangible treasures. In Deuteronomy, we find the famous verse where we're taught, one does not live by bread alone. We need more than simple sustenance. We need purpose. We need our synagogues. We need women's league and men's club. These are the touchstones of our lives. We may find happiness on the golf course or in the boutiques or in season tickets to the theater, but we also need something more. And that is what Women's League provides as an arm of our synagogues and the conservative movement. It gives us a connection to our ancient heritage, to our people and to our God. One does not live by bread alone. Is it irony or is it just fitting? Somehow by sharing with those in need, we ourselves find sustenance. Susan Steinberg moved to Augusta in 1986. She has served in about every capacity that exists in sisterhood. She is the perennial coordinator of Sisterhood Shabbat. She created Ethnic Shabbat, which until COVID had been a hit in our shul for a long, long time. As for the region, she's been vice president of communications, secretary, vice president of conference, conference co-chair, and she is an International Women's League board member. When Hadassah was active, she was the quota corps chair. She served on the Augusta Jewish Community Center board, the humanitarian award committee. She's past president of Augusta Jewish Federation, secretary and campaign vice president, recipient of the coveted Maurice Steinberg Award. She spearheaded the three kosher singers concert that took place at the historic Imperial Theater here in Augusta, 2011, I think. She also headed up the Visions concert for the Augusta Jewish community. She's the team leader for all Augusta Jewish Federation soup kitchen volunteers, the chair of Empty Bowl, I believe, since its inception. And you have no idea how much work that is, maybe not. <laughs> she was on the Ronald McDonald House board and co-chaired two successful silent auctions, CASA volunteer with child enrichment and general uh, child enrichment volunteer. She's organized the annual Hanukkah musical program for many years, organized the Hanukkah Bazaar and has been the buyer for all of the gifts for as long as I can remember. She's a retired special educator for after 30 years of service. She holds a master's degree in special ed. She was a finalist for teacher of the year in Richmond County, I think 2003. She is a member of the Augusta Jewish Museum Board where she works on fundraising. I wonder who nominated her for that position. She's put together 
the Jewish community phone directory and sold all of the display ads in it for decades. She's one of our synagogue ushers. She's either uh, prepared Kiddush for Shabbat morning or seen to it that it was prepared thousands of times. How many of us predicted that she'd never be able to maintain that kind of commitment, that she'd burn herself out? So much for that theory. I could probably count the number of Shabbat morning services that she's missed in the past nearly 20 years on one hand. Susan, I think it's time for you to step up and contribute something to our community. Well, I take that back. You've done about everything that could possibly be done for our community. And now it's time to take on the region. Ladies of the Southeast, I know that you know how fortunate you are. Ladies like Susan Steinberg are very, very rare. I've often said that if I had 10 members like Susan Steinberg, we'd have 24 karat gold faucets and plumbing at the shul. Is she the most observant Jew you've ever met? The most charitable? Are you? Am I? I'll leave that for you to ponder. But I challenge you to find a soul more righteous, more selfless, more dedicated. And I congratulate you, the Southeast region, and you too, Susan, with a full and a happy heart. I say, chazak, chazak, may your noble organization go from strength to strength. And let us say, amen, mazal tov. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rabbi Cyril, for your kind words today and your support over the years as I transition from leadership of ways to my presidency of Southern Region. And before I discuss what I see in my crystal ball for the region, I thought you might want to know a little about me. I consider myself to be an Oreo. Yes, a middle child sandwiched in between two brothers. I was born and my older brother is on the spectrum, so I have kind of become the eldest. And Rabbi talked about how I am at Shabbat services every Saturday. Part of that is because when my brother moved down here in um, 2009, Shabbat services are extremely important to him, so I have been bringing him every Saturday. I was born on 12-24-1950, a Christmas Eve baby who once said, if I'm not married by the time I'm 25, I will become the first Jewish nun. Well, I didn't marry by 25, and nor did I become a nun. My older brother was born on 12-31-1948, a New Year's Eve baby. And my younger brother was born on 12-12-52. He was upset that he was not born on a holiday. Even though his birthday fell during Hanukkah many times. He also vo voiced aggravation because he was the only one in our family who didn't wear glasses. And then he finally did. Um, but the funniest thing was um, my brilliant comment one night at dinner, I thought I was really intelligent, regarding the three kids being born in December. You see, my parents were married in March. So I deduced and declared to them that they had sex every other year on their anniversary for a period of six years. Now on to my hopes and goals for all of us. Because our um, WLCJ theme will once again be Biyakad together, my vision for Southern Region for the next three years is Biyakad to somehow shorten the distance between our individual sisterhoods and bring us closer together. It is my hope that each individual sisterhood president will be an integral part of our Southern Region Board, contributing ideas, communicating needs, addressing issues together. 
I also hope that we can add one or two more sisterhoods as well as more individual members. Due to COVID, Jen could not fulfill face-to-face -face visits. However, Zoom permitted her to be with you for events. As a result, she used very little of her travel budget. Pending a lift of travel restrictions, I foresee this budget being totally expended. Please call me to attend your events. I will let you know I am not available January um, 1st through 10th. I will be prepping for our Way Sisterhood Shabbat, which will be held um, the 7th and 8th of January. It is likely I will be in touch to plan road trips and possibly work with sisterhoods in close proximity of each other to plan joint programs so that I can be with multiple sisterhoods. I do not know that our inter I do know that our international president Debbie Goldich will be in Augusta for our women's Shabbat January 7th through January 9th and has requested a road trip prior to or after. At this time, I am planning that our executive committee will meet at least four times during the year and that the board, including our sisterhood presidents, will also meet at least four times a year. Um, I can't emphasize enough how I want our individual sisterhoods to be involved in the workings of Southern Region, the Southern Region Board. Um, region presidents have been asked to use the first and second Mondays or Wednesdays for executive committee and board meetings. I've already scheduled a few, but I'm not sure I scheduled them right. But the, the one that is most important right now is Sunday, June 13th to begin at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And that will be for board and incoming sisterhood presidents with our um, training with our consultant, Renee Ravitch. Uh, I will be notifying you of meetings already scheduled and seeking input through a doodle poll for the remaining ones. Um, as I have a personal 40 minute Zoom account, I plan to have video conversations as needed with my executive committee and board. And I've already used this mode of communication and find it to be quite effective. Just so you know, I'm a person who plans ahead and gets my ducks in a row, long before others deem it necessary. Yes, I do sometimes get bogged down and leave stuff until the last minute, but I do try to stay organized. In these latter instances, I will definitely need your help. As I said, when I began, my number one goal is to bring our far-flung region together to maintain open channels of communication and to improve um, Southern region during the next three years. And I cannot do this alone. We will do this together, biyachad. Okay, Jen. I have this bag for you and eventually I will get it to you. But on behalf of the outgoing Southern Region Board, I would like to present you with a small token of our appreciation for your leadership these past three years. We have a little something for your home, something for when you're on the roam and when you're hungry and want to eat, we have a special treat. Toda Raba. Thank you very much, Susan. You're welcome. I look forward to working with you in the next three years. Me too. Okay, I have some stuff for you. The gavel. This is the first thing that I'm going to hand to you as soon as I can see you again. The Sadaka box. This pin. You're the keeper of the treasures of Southern Region. And this okay. pin on a necklace comes to you. And the hat and the boa. These are all now yours. 
plus the six boxes that are um, in my office. So and you, I guess the, the banner behind you. Yes, you get the banner. So that's all yours. I look forward to giving it to you. Okay. Okay, for our closing plenary, we're going to start it by mentioning the fact that this conference was dedicated to Phyllis Cruson Weinstein. You should see that in your program and uh, her, may her memory be a blessing. I, I was very privileged to meet her and get to know her a little bit. And um, I'm thrilled that we can, we, we can honor her in this way, considering we've lost a good member of, of our community. And I'm going to turn the rest of this over to Susan so that she can close up as conference VP. Okay, um, I guess first on the agenda is announcing the winner of the um, Talit that was donated by Beth Shalom Sisterhood for um, the sisterhood that had the highest attendance based on their per capita. And the winner actually is Beth Shalom. But Beth Shalom <laughs> did not feel comfortable taking the prize because they are in charge of the conference. And usually when you are hosting a conference, you have the largest attendance. Second in line, um, and I didn't feel totally comfortable accepting this, but um, Waze is the winner of the Talit. And we thank Beth Shalom for donating this. Um, I'm not sure that is what helped our attendance, but I think this is the largest attendance we have had um, at a Southern Region Conference in a long time. Rini, do you want to do the, the- Yeah, here's the Tali. You can see it. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Do you want to do the raffle now? Sure. We okay. actually are able to give six prizes, correct? Correct. We're gonna do 150, 125, 120 and 315. I'm going to start with the 15. I can't see who I'm drawing. And the first part, the first $15 winner is um, Jennifer Sampson. If um, and we said we would do either an Amazon or a Target gift, certi um, gift certificate. So if you will let me know in the chat which you want, that would be great. The second $15 one. These are so little, it's hard to get them out. <laughs> The second $15 one is Madeline Gimble. Thank you. The third one is Barb Levin. This is a gift certificate at the at the shul. Is that what it is? No, no, it's a gift certificate from Amazon or Target. Oh, okay. Let me know what you I want. I got to come to Atlanta. That was cool. <laughs> the um, twenty dollar gift certificate is Hillary Rosenbaum. Thank you. <laughs> 
And for $25, it's Robin Budenstein. Budenstein. Budenstein, okay. Thank you so much. What a surprise. <laughs> Robin, you're upstairs. Yeah, I'm everywhere. <laughs> And the $50 gift certificate goes to Jennifer Wood. <laughs> Roll that one again. <laughs> Let somebody else have that. <laughs> okay. We stuck together. Jennifer, you just keep being lucky. That's it. <laughs> Is Regina Newman. <laughs> okay, that is all of them. And if you will let me know which one you want, Target or Amazon, I will email them to you. I think I know I can email... Amazon, I think I can email Target. If not, I'll get it to you. Beanie, you need to put, um, you can't con uh, get in touch with you in the chat. Oh, you can't? Mm -hmm. No, so you need All right, to then just email me or send it to, Sh you can get in touch with Cheryl, send it to Cheryl and she'll send it to me. Oh, now it's Cheryl. on. Me. Cheryl put your, they just put Rini on, so you can send Okay, send it to me and I'll send it. Uh, send your email. You want me to send my email? Yes, please. So I have to get in touch with um, Jennifer Sampson. Okay. I'll put my email in the chat. Thank you. And I think we have one more item um, on our closing plenary, and that's the announcement of the location for next year and a uh, reminder of the upcoming evaluation of the conference. And I don't know that the announcement is necessary because it, it was in the um, program booklet. But I'm pleased to announce that Beth Shalom Sisterhood will be hosting the Southern Region Conference in Memphis, Tennessee on March 21st and 22nd, 2022. Um, that was not quite right in the program. It's an error we didn't catch, but those are the correct dates. And watch for information. We will be trying to get it out as early as possible. And then I want to remind you that we will be sending an evaluation that can be completed on the computer. Um, it's important in reviewing just how we did with today's conference and for planning future conferences. There actually will be a couple of future conference questions. Um, I wanna thank you in advance for taking the time to complete your evaluation and um, I think that concludes the conference. And you are welcome to stay. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, I'm ready to go. Thank you. Sir.